Let's now look at what information high resolution X-ray diffraction can provide on thin films on wafers. We will discuss two types of thin films, polycrystalline thin films and epitaxial thin films. Typical polycrystalline thin films are in the 100 nanometers range and sometimes thinner. The thinner the sample, the more challenging the measurement becomes. Typically, we would do a grazing incidence measurement, meaning that the X-ray beam is at a very shallow incident angle and fixed for the duration of the measurement. For such measurement to be useful, the sample must have a randomly oriented crystallites. For thicker thin films and films with texture, one would typically do a similar measurement to the one done on a powder, where the incidence angle varies as a function of detector angle. However, to avoid measuring the signal from the substrate, an offset is added. So the incidence angle is not half of the diffraction angle, which would typically bring the substrate in diffraction condition when the detector is at the angle where the wafer diffracts, producing a very strong peak and often some artifacts. The information we can obtain from the polycrystalline thin films is the same as that from a powder sample. However, the signal intensity is much reduced and collection time must be increased especially for the more advanced analyses. In the case of thinner films, the peaks will also be much broader, further reducing the signal intensity. Epitaxial thin films are single crystal films grown on single crystal substrates with coinciding lattices. Since the film remains a single crystal, the diffraction will only be in very discrete directions. The information one can obtain from high resolution measurement on an epitaxial film are the film quality where we measure the spread in orientation of the film's diffraction spot, the film composition when working with solid solutions, the film thickness, and finally, the strain remaining in the film as a result of the mismatch between the substrate and the film's lattice parameters. In order to get the information we need, the instrument must be able to provide the necessary resolution. Typically, the system will have a monochromator to only probe the sample with pure K-alpha-1 radiation. In our system, we have a mirror collimating the beam followed by a monochromator. The combination increases the X-ray intensity at the sample. The signal is then detected by either an open detector, referred to as rocking curve detector, or a monochromator followed by a detector, which provides high diffraction angle resolution and is typically referred to as triple axis detector. The type of measurements are rocking curve, omega to theta, and reciprocal space maps. Let's now look at them in more details. The rocking curve measurement is done by rocking the sample, varying the incidence angle onto the sample while maintaining the detector at a fixed angle. This provides information about the mosaicity of the sample. The mosaicity is the spread in crystallite's orientation. The narrower the peak, the more perfect the crystal is. The broader the peak, the less perfect the film is. The peak width can also be correlated with the film's defect density. This measurement is always the first step when analyzing an AP film. Once we are satisfied with the film's rocking curve, we can look at the coupled omega to theta measurement. Such measurement can only be carried out on an on-axis peak, a peak which is the family of the wafer's orientation. In this case, the substrate is used as a reference. During the measurement, we maintain omega, the X-ray incident angle onto the sample, at half the diffraction angle to theta. The period of the fringes provides the film's thickness. The position of the layer peak is defined by the relaxation and the composition of the film. On this example, we can see that we can get a very similar plot for a strained film with 20% germanium and a fully relaxed film with 11.45% germanium. Therefore, a single omega to theta measurement may not be sufficient to provide the composition and relaxation without any other data. One should also point out that if the layer is tilted with respect to the substrate, the measurement becomes challenging and at times impossible using the triple axis detector, which is the typical detector for such measurement. 
Finally, the third type of measurement on an epifilm is a 2D measurement, a reciprocal space map. Depending on the peak being measured, we can use two types of scan geometry, either omega 2 theta as a function of omega or 2 theta as a function of omega. We can measure both on axis and off axis diffraction spots since omega and 2 theta are no longer linked. By definition, on axis peaks have omega at half of 2 theta and off axis peaks do not. We have some examples for silicon listed here. Once we have completed the measurement, the relative position of the peaks between the film and substrate are key to informing our strain composition question. In this example, if the sample is fully relaxed, the off-axis peak will move along the GSI line. But, in a strain sample, the layer peak position will deviate from that line and shift towards the vertical. The closer it is to vertical, the more strained the film is. The off-axis data can then provide quantitative information on the strain, which then further informs the composition analysis. One last type of measurements can be done on thin films. It is X-ray reflectivity. In an X-ray reflectivity experiment, we are no longer looking at diffraction. So, the sample can be a single crystal, polycrystalline, or even amorphous, without affecting the interpretation of the data. However, the sample must be very smooth and flat, with roughness less than a couple of nanometers being preferred. XRR provides information about the film's thickness and density. The measurable thicknesses range from a few nanometers to a few hundred nanometers. As we can see on the left plot, the thicker the film, the higher the frequency of the oscillations. The density of the material is defined by the critical angle, the angle where the signal drops off. The higher the angle, the denser the material is. The right plot illustrates the change in the drop-off angle with density for two films 100 nanometer in thickness. The blue line illustrates the shape of the pattern for a multi-layer sample where the period resulting from the two thicknesses is clearly apparent. One has a lower frequency, one has a higher frequency for the thicker film. The more films are present, the trickier the analysis becomes.